meant to, in layman's terms? Oh, if we would know, <laughs> we know it is there uh, and it constitutes uh, a large uh, fraction, the overwhelming fraction of the mass which is in, uh, uh, present in the universe. Uh, a large fraction of the mass? Of the mass universe. in the universe. Okay. So, so most of the, of the mass in the universe, the gravitating mass, is made of, out of something which is not uh, ordinary matter, protons, neutrons, electrons, we are made of uh, and uh, we are living with. It's some kind of exotic matter which we know it is there uh, from astronomical observations, but we don't know what it is precisely. It's a competitive field. There's quite a few experiments uh, here at Snow Lab and in other places in the world looking for dark matter. And, and Deep 3600, which is going to get built uh, not far from here, uh, just a couple hundred feet away, uh, is what we're really hoping to discover dark matter with. The, what we're looking for here with liquid argon, what makes it such an appealing technology, is that the uh, dark matter, as we travel through our galaxy, we actually hit the dark matter, and that causes the uh, liquid argon atoms to bounce a little bit, and as they recoil through the argon, a little bit of wonderful chemistry happens and you end up with a flash of ultraviolet light. That makes argon an extremely sensitive detector for uh, many sorts of radiation. The light that we then come out we're going to measure and actually what people are working here with is, is part of that optic system building it to, to measure the light and, and understand what the signals in the argon are. So what we're standing on is actually the deck. Underneath us are two large tanks, uh, both 25 foot tall, and these will be filled with water uh, with the uh, experiment at the very center of each of the water tanks. And the reason why we use water is it's a very inexpensive way uh, to uh, shield that experiment from some of the outside backgrounds. Uh, so the Mini Clean experiment and the Deep 3600 experiment both use liquid argon to look for these rare dark matter interactions. Uh, but both are taking slightly different technical approaches and actually work very closely together uh, on the various uh, research and development for both of these two experiments in the effort that a larger experiment will eventually be built to kind of take the best, best pieces from both. We're also looking for dark matter, uh, but we, our detection technology is a bubble chamber. So inside the pressure vessel where it's glowing red, uh, there will be a, a quartz jar filled with a superheated fluid. So a fluid that is taken above its boiling point, uh, but it won't boil until something makes the first bubble. And in this case, the thing that will make the first bubble is a dark matter particle that scatters in the fluid. The way the, the chamber works is we drop the pressure, that makes the fluid superheated. At that point, a dark matter particle or an alpha decay can deposit energy in the chamber enough to make the first bubble. Those cameras seed that bubble form, and then if we just let the thing go, the bubble will grow and the whole chamber will start boiling. So we usually try and stop it before that happens. But that one bubble would be the signature of dark matter. Basically, what dark matter will do is create one bubble in the chamber. Now there are other things that, 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 that make bubbles in the chamber. Neutrons going through can make mo multiple bubbles. Uh, an alpha decay going off make one bubble in the chamber, but actually we record the acoustic emission from the bubble formation and an alpha decay going off sounds different than a neutron or a dark matter particle going through. Well, we know that dark matter exists from the cosmological and astronomical observations. And there are a couple experiments uh, which see signals um, and they think it might be dark matter, uh, but so far that couldn't be confirmed. And actually if these experiments see dark matter, we should have seen it a long time ago and we didn't see anything. And in this field it's so difficult, there's so many other stuff that can look like dark matter uh, that my suspicion is that most of what the other experiments have seen is not actually dark matter, but it's something else. And that's one of the reasons why we need more than one experiment. We need different technologies, different uh, ways to detect dark matter so we can actually have a better handle on distinguishing between 